now before I get going here this morning and we uh, paint our little part here to see how the these little loops that we made will look after they're painted um, and I also want to uh, check to see is there coating on this now the experiment that I'm going to conduct and you know on camera I have not done it yet although I, I already kind of know how it's going to go I think uh, I want to mention thank you to those viewers who drew to the fact that that little ball bearing that I thought was supposed to go on top of that spring I don't know what I was thinking of and even more I don't know what what it is I saw I thought I saw it there stuck on the back of that um, shielding that's on the, just on the other side here anyway uh, um, yeah I do remember when I when I tried this thing it didn't feel quite the same and yet it, it felt okay so I didn't think that hey there was supposed to be a little bearing that helped the detents here um, so thanks to those viewers who drew that to my attention I rewatched the video and sure enough so I've taken this apart now for the third time and uh, I'm getting pretty good at it uh, another thing that I did uh, Tony mentioned that if you if I clean off the the this thing here and I've done this so many times that it's starting to wear down um, I just used a little piece of 1000 grit and I went around anywhere there was a mechanical contact I was able to do something about it I also uh, know that there is a stuff that you can buy that you can help get rid of uh, a, a buildup of uh, uh, corrosion and uh, another thing I did was I, I cleaned these off you didn't see me do that and then I, I spread it up th this apart here so that it, so that there's more friction involved and it's nice and tight I would say that right now I've got this thing back to not as good as new but at least back to where it was maybe five years ago so it's working great um, so anyway now about this I haven't tried this yet and uh, maybe I should reposition the camera so that you can see uh, better what I was going to do my, my intent was uh, to use a, a light bulb uh, that would go off if there's if it's making contact on the uh, on the uh, copper on the copper wire. Now I, th I do believe that these strands are bare copper wires. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to reposition the camera because I realize you can't see it too good here. Okay, I've had another sip of coffee here, and I think we're ready to go. I've got a little LED bulb here. It's being powered by uh, three volts and what we have is our wires that are in question I have not checked this what you're about to see me do <clears throat> excuse me I haven't actually tried now the idea is that when we make a uh, contact here it the light bulb should should go off okay now Oh, the reason you saw it flickering there, and even though it was it was constantly, it was it was constantly touching. What often will happen is when you have it barely touching, it will arc, and oxidation will build up in 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 the arc, and then the the metal parts are no longer actually touching; they're being separated by this some sort of oxidation that goes on. Not sure what it's called. I just know I just know what it works how it works okay now now when we take this and if we touch these wires our light bulb should go off should go on if it doesn't then yes there's something there's something separating the metal uh, oh by the way the reason for all the transistors and so on is because there is a way and I've done it before but I have to be honest with you I've forgotten the formula uh, but uh, there there is a way to uh, rig it up so that it is extremely sensitive and and the, and the arcing is is so minimal that it doesn't affect the process or the the experiment if you know what I mean but anyway here we go and enough uh, enough here so let's just 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 take one here I hope you can see this one here okay now you notice as I'm as I'm going up and down the wire it's uh, let's try a different one here okay 
I, I am convinced that these wires are not coated because it just seems that no matter where I touch them, our, our light bulb goes off. There is no jacket or whatever you want to call or coating or anything like that on these wires. Yeah, you, you can you can rig it up so it's so sensitive, and I've done that. You know, if you wire your your transistors up properly, you can make it so sensitive that if I was to put my finger on here and my finger on here and hold these together, just the electricity passing through your body would be enough to make the light bulb go off if you use the transistors. And if memory serves, from when I used to do this. It's called a, a Darlington pair. I think uh, you guys that are into this sort of thing know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, bottom line is, there is no coating on these little wires. Yeah, the connection's good enough that I don't need to use a transistorized circuit to sensitize the, make it more sensitive. But anyway, um, all right, so I had a resistor glued in right here, and uh, a resistor glued in right here, and somehow I had it all wired up. And what you see here is what is known as a Darlington pair. The uh, uh, <laughs> little lawnmower's driving by. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, so I've got a Darlington pair here. The one transistor will activate the other one and the other one will actually run the power to whatever it is you had to do. And the reason I, I, I had this system all rigged up is because years ago, you know, when you get to my age, you like to talk about the past, right? So uh, years ago, I had the idea that I was going to make a recording thermometer. And and I did, and it looked a lot like a... Um, a, a seismograph, you know, with, with the rotating drum and little pen goes back and forth on the drum on a graph. And, and and the only thing I've got of that, I never took any pictures, and I'm so sorry that I didn't. The only thing I've got is when I would print out the graphs, I've still got the, uh, the, the uh, template for printing it out. And maybe I can show that to you. Um, it was extremely accurate. And as the drum turned, the pen would move back and forth. And I, I used a thermometer... Uh, for an old wall th thermostat thermometer and uh, the coil out of it and what was happening is let's say we had these these two wires and they were close together like this and and as the temperature would cool down that the the the, the, uh, set the uh, arm of the thing would go down and it would touch this one and it would activate a little electric motor which would turn in one direction and when it went back up it would it would touch the other one and it, it would turn the motor in the other direction which in turn threw a bunch of pulleys and all the rest of it you know how i like to those of you who watch my big clock series you know i fool around a lot a lot like that and anyway what was happening was it would work good for a few hours and then all of a sudden for no reason it would stop and i i couldn't figure out what it was and then i realized it was arcing and when it was arcing it was it, it was building up a coating which which actually separated it so that the parts were not re the metal wasn't really touching its making contact in other words and um, so I thought what can I do about this and I always sort of knew about transistors and, and you know that kind of thing I, well, I didn't always know but anyway I, uh, so I went to uh, Radio Shack that was back when Radio Shack was called Radio Shack and uh, I, I bought a bunch of this stuff. Oh, by the way, you'll notice that one is different. Well, I burned one out, <laughs> so I had to replace it. I, I went back to Radio Shack, and, and they, they didn't have any more of this exact same kind, so I, I got this, which is, which is good, because this one doesn't require to put out a lot of power, uh, whereas the, the other ones kind of did, because they had to operate an electric motor. And and this actually worked. And this thing was so sensitive that it was it it con by the way it constantly drew the room air in through over top of the coil on the thermostat, and and it was uh, so sensitive that if I put my hand over the the air intake, uh, it w it would immediately start to move the pen on the graph. It was that sensitive, and it was fairly accurate too. I compared it and calibrated it with a. Uh, uh, a, a digital thermometer which was quite accurate anyway I'm, I'm rambling here and you guys don't want to hear that you want to you know you want me to get on with painting this I know so um, 
Yeah, so that's what this is all about. It was just to, to make the, uh, the, uh, the thing more sensitive. Not more accurate, just more sensitive. Now, just one more thing, and then we won't talk about my recording thermometer anymore, at least not for a while. Uh, yeah, I was pretty proud of that thing. And uh, I made it in the summertime, but I, I used it for, oh, I guess a few months until I, the novelty wore off. And uh, winter rolled around, and I said to the wife, I wonder what, what does the temperature go down to if we turn the furnace off overnight? So she went along with it, and we... Uh, turned our furnace off when we went to bed and uh, next morning I get up and I go check my uh, graph and sure enough the uh, you know the the line steadily goes down I think it went down to close to 16 degrees and oh by the way this is all in Celsius uh, yeah the the numbers along the sides are that are the time uh, you know one two three up to 12 p.m. and then it starts over again um, and the, the temperatures across are, are from, I think it's 27 degrees down to around 15 degrees. That, that was its range. Anyway, it went down to around 16. And I was noticing that the line, yes, it went steadily down as the time passed. It was about eight hours, I guess. Uh, but I was noticing that there was a bit of a spike. It would go down, and about 45 minutes later, there'd be a little bit of a spike. And then 45 minutes would pass, and it'd spike again. And I was looking at this the next morning, and I was trying to figure out what that was. And just about the time I'm looking at it and wondering what caused that, my fridge, which was on, turned off. Or maybe it was the other way. Maybe it was off and it suddenly turned on. And I realized it was the fridge in the kitchen. By the way, I had the thermometer set up just about where the model table is right now. Anyway, the fridge would go on. It would warm up the air in the kitchen just a little bit. And then it would waft its way into the living room. And it would uh, cause the thermometer to sort of spike just a little bit. Yeah, it was that accurate. It was that sensitive. <laughs> I was very proud of that thing. I am so sorry I didn't take pictures. This was before I started doing this sort of thing. I'm guessing this goes back, oh, 15, uh, maybe more years ago. Anyway, doesn't matter now. Okay, now we won't talk about it anymore. Now I have to be careful when I'm handling this, I keep forgetting those things are there. And by the time I felt them, I've bent them. Now, this thing here, I'll move the camera up so you can see it. Okay, remember we made this way back when we were trying to find the center of something for the camera rotator. Well, this should also work good. I may not have it positioned in this spot. I'm just trying it out. This is the first time I'm, I'm trying it out. And, all right, so we have it so that it's centered there. We can get it to stop swinging. Okay, so, all right, now if I raise this up a little bit, and then we place this underneath. Okay, now those three three items should be pretty much centered. But they're not. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Okay, that's pretty close. How to waste a bunch of time, right?
Okay, let's try it again. Uh, it's pretty close. Should really go this way just a little bit. Yeah. Now when I zoom in onto this, when I'm, when I'm spraying it, I don't need to worry about the stuff getting uh, out of the field of view. Now mind you, I probably won't be using the super macro or anything like that, but I might choose to use the macro lens. We'll see how it goes. About uh, five minutes ago I shook this up in the paint shaker. It's, uh, I don't know what which uh, gray this is. It's obviously a blend of something. I believe it's thinned out for airbrush. If you remember, I was saying that when we do the hood, I only plan to use three, maybe four different shades of gray and not blend them and stick to them so that later on, when it comes to doing touch-ups, um, you know, it makes it a little easier. Um, anyway, I don't care if I waste this. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, this, this part here from uh, Tony's model, it's... Uh, it's not really cleaned off too good, so it's quite possible that the paint is not going to stick to it too well. I'm more concerned of how how will it work on this little smallest one one of these uh, uh, eye hooks that's in the middle here. Uh, you know, is it going to fill in the eye so that I can't pass a piece of easy line through it? No, I don't think it will. But let's let's just give it a try here. And also, this is not a tutorial on how to airbrush. This is just sort of the way I do it. And it may not be the right way, but it works. So, yeah, I've got my uh, air pressure right now set for about 22 pounds. I find that this particular airbrush, in fact, it's the only airbrush I know how to use, it's the only airbrush I've ever had, is uh, it, it likes high pressure better than low pressure. So uh, we'll start off at 22 and see how it works. And I'm just going to put a few little drops of uh, clear in here, or, or thinner rather. And uh, we'll stick the macro lens on when I actually go to spray. So, uh, I think that's going to be all right. Now, obviously, this is way more than I need. I'll pour back what I don't need before I clean out the airbrush. Uh, I just need enough to do this one little part. And uh, because I need another end of this for uh, to make a little cup for uh, for when I use CA glue, I like to be able to have the end nipped off. And I don't. I don't. I'm not going to clean this off. Otherwise, I would have a little glass with hot soapy water in it, and I would. Anyway, giving you more information than you need to know here. Okay. Now, I don't have any paint on my fingers, so I'm just going to put on the macro lens and we'll get in nice and close here. Maybe I should put the lid on here so it doesn't dry out. At least it'll help. Okay, we'll get our fan going here. So it's uh, you. You can't see what I'm doing, but and our rotator on, and here we go. pressure a little bit here.
Okay, how does that look? I can actually see it clearer in the monitor than by looking at it. Um, I will let that dry and we'll check it out. I don't think I need a second coat, but maybe I do. Obviously the hole in that center one is going to be plenty big enough to uh, uh, accommodate the easy line. Okay, I'm going to clean up my airbrush and uh, uh, thanks for watching and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.